All right, so uh, we've been talking about widgets, and widgets uh, are little, uh, little features that you add onto your site. Usually they're very visual. So here under the widgets screen, we can add this, we can add that. Again, depending on the theme, we may have more than one widget area. Depending on the theme, we may have more options of widgets. There's widgets out there for um, subscribing and uh, e-commerce and social media, just lots of widgets. And we were experimenting with the text widget, which could be one of the most powerful ones because it accepts any valid code, HTML and CSS code. And then we saw that we can put a video on our site and, and all of that. So. Let's look at um, how we might get more widgets. Uh, we'll look at it via the route of plugins. Plugins could give you more widgets. Themes could give you more widgets. We've used at least one widget, uh, one plugin in this class, the one that makes a duplicate of the site, remember? So plugins are like mini apps that give your site more features. One of the features was this to make a duplicate backup. Uh, this, whole, this whole process we did earlier in the day of Duplicator, that is not built into WordPress. That was an add-on. That was the Duplicator plugin. So on the left menu, click on Plugins. That's the same as going to Installed Plugins. Just click on Plugins. In this shows here, we've got three plugins. You can have as many plugins as you want, as many extra features as you want, but the problem is each plugin uses up some resources. It uses up some space on the server, it uses some bandwidth, which means how many times can you download it, it uses up the speed of your site and the RAM and all of that because Every website runs on a special computer called a server. And a server, like your own laptop, has a hard drive and a CPU and RAM. It has resources. So if you purchase uh, a server, space and such, it's going to have resources. And you can put as many plugins as you want, as many products, as many videos, etc. But you're going to use up your resources. So here we've got three plugins, and we can have 30 plugins, we could have 300 plugins, sure. As many plugins as we need to get the job done. But we may take up resources. And the funny thing is, it says here we've got three plugins, one is active, two are inactive. Even the ones that are inactive are using up resources. They're using up the hard drive space, because they need to be installed and ready to use, so they take up hard drive space. And they're even using resources for updates. Uh, most likely in the next class, one of the first things we'll talk about is the whole concept of WordPress updates. WordPress software gets updated just like every other software. Like when you had Windows 7 and you upgraded to Windows 8, or maybe Windows 10. Or maybe when you had your Mac OS 10.9 and you upgraded to 10.10. .10. Or when you had your Android phone and you just got... Uh, uh, Android 6, when you went from iOS 8 to 9, whatever. Software updates. Same thing with WordPress. Same thing with plugins. Same thing with themes and widgets. Software is always being updated. The reason for that is because software can have vulnerabilities. Someone might figure out that a plugin can be hacked, and then suddenly all the credit card uh, database is, is exposed. So plugins and themes and WordPress and everything has updates. We'll talk about updates a little bit later, next month most likely. But the point is, even a deactivated plugin is checking to see if there's a new version. So that's why I'm saying, make a note that we can have as many plugins as we want, but you should really only have the plugins installed that you will use. <clears throat> Don't have plugins hanging around that you're not using because they take up resources and they could uh, leave you vulnerable to, 
to exploits, to hacks, or people trying to break into your site and such. In our site here, we have a, a plugin called Akismet, Duplicator, and Hello Dolly. Hello Dolly is the default plugin. It really doesn't do anything. It's just kind of a... I don't even know why they still include it. It's just um, a proof of concept that, yes, you've got plugins. It doesn't do anything. So if we don't want a plugin anymore, what do you think we do? Delete it. Let's delete the Hello Dolly plugin. Just click the delete button under Hello Dolly. And for this also, I mean actually for this one there is at least a Are You Sure screen. You're about to remove the following plugin. Are you sure you wish to delete these files? Yes or no? Click yes. <laughs> and so now we've got two left. Duplicator and Akismet. Duplicator we installed, which creates a backup of your WordPress files and database. Duplicate and move an entire site from one location to another in a few steps. Create a full snapshot of your site. So we've used it. We're going to use it again a little later when we make a copy of our site again. Duplicator. It's a good plugin. There, there, we're using the free version, but there's also the premium version. In, in the whole world of WordPress, there's a lot. There's a big cottage industry of uh, uh, it's known as the freemium model in that you often get a free version of something and then you pay a little bit extra and you can get more features. So with the duplicator plugin, I believe there are extra features like plug uh, like uh, backup automation and such. Uh, I don't know the price of it at the moment. Uh, view details. Um, I don't want to get too off track, but uh, uh, no, 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 yeah, if I don't see it right away, never mind. But it's probably a you know forty dollars, eighty dollars, something. It's not terribly expensive. But there's a pro version of this plugin. There's one called Akismet. It is not currently active. This one is active. Notice there's no delete on Duplicator. You cannot delete a plugin until you deactivate it. Obviously, we're not going to delete Duplicator. It's a very useful plugin. A Kismet, we will also not delete. It's another useful plugin. Used by millions, A Kismet is quite possibly the best way in the world to protect your blog from spam. It keeps your site protected even while you sleep. Other stuff. So, A Kismet, if you have the ability for people to comment on your blog, you might want the A Kismet plugin. It will help stamp out the spam. Um, we're not going to get into exactly how, how to work with it, but there are instructions right here that we can look into. So we'll leave Akismet alone. I want to talk about uh, some other plugins that I would recommend. Um, at the top, let's select Add New. We're going to add a new Notice it's also here on the left. Add new plugin. Let's add a new plugin. This takes us to the plugin marketplace, and we see featured, popular, recommended, favorites. Featured. So here's, oh, there's a Kismet right there. And notice then we've got a marketplace with ratings and installation, feedback, and is it compatible? Etc. And right away here, I see it. Hopefully, you see it also. I see a plugin called Jetpack. You see the Jetpack plugin? This is one of the plugins that I highly recommend. Um, if you set up a WordPress.com blog, it has features that our version of WordPress does not. You can go to WordPress.com and create a free website there, but the problem is that it will most likely have an address such as victor.wordpress.com. If 
victor.wordpress.com. If you, if you get a free site at wordpress.com, you will have that name. You, if you pay WordPress, I don't remember the price, then you can get victor.com. But it's still going to be limited compared to the version that we have <coughs> ourselves. The cool thing is that we can get the Jetpack plugin and this will open up those extra features that WordPress.com has that ours doesn't. One of those features that we don't have under settings, the WordPress.com people, they have a setting called Publicize, which is a setting that allows us to link our website with social media. So if I publish a blog post, I can automatically send it to Twitter or Pinterest uh, or Facebook, etc. But we don't even have that feature here. It's under Settings Publicize. We don't have it. But we can get it for free if we activate the Jetpack plugin. And Jetpack gives us a bunch of other great features. So I'm not going to get into it. You, you need to read on your own, and it's not too complicated. I'm just going to have you make a note. The Jetpack plugin is a very good plugin to set up. You can do it on your own later. Click install, activate, learn how to use it. It's not that complicated, but it gives you extra features that are highly useful. If, uh, if you're going to, for example, also if you want to speed up your site, there's an option that you can activate in Jetpack that will um, that will speed up your site, uh, especially if you've got a lot of pictures. So you can read about it on your own, but Jetpack is, is a plugin that I recommend. Yeah? I don't know if you mentioned this before, but um, how do you determine which ones are free? If you click on it now, and then they want uh, the pay. I mean, I want to avoid the pay ones right now. Uh, I mean, they don't they just can't list them by most of the time uh, you're gonna see if there is a paid one it will it will tell you right away but no I don't I don't believe I see a uh, let me just confirm I don't believe I see a way to list only the, the free ones if I do uh, author tag featured popular recommended tag um, No, I don't. Um, I don't see a way to really to see that. I guess they're all mixed in. The free and the paid are. Yeah. yeah, but most of the time you're going to assume that all of the ones are are going to be free. You're actually pretty much going to assume that they're all freemium, meaning you're going to get like ninety eight percent usage of the plugin. That extra two percent might be the paid stuff, and the paid stuff often means tech support. Because these plugins, this particular one, Jetpack, comes from the official WordPress team, automatic, but not all of them do. This, one's come, this one comes from the BuddyPress community. This one over here is from uh, Pross Auto 42. Let's see another one. Popular. This one comes from Michael Torbert from Viper 007 Bond. So different developers create these, and the point of that is that these different people, different companies, individuals, etc., they can decide the prices and if this particular plugin that I downloaded is not working, I'm not going to go off and, and, and run off to WordPress and ask them to fix it. I need to ask Michael Torbert how to fix it, oh. and most likely that's going to be the paid aspect of things. So um, you always have the ability, more details, click there, and then that should tell you description, installation, change a lot, frequently asked questions, reviews, and so forth. Question? So always check, the, check those details, and they'll tell you somewhere there, this is the free version. It does not include X, and then you can decide to pay or not.
these tags here actually are a bit of a tag cloud. So these, these are all keywords of different plugins. <coughs> so notice some of these words are bigger than others, social media and so forth. So there's keywords you can search. People are always searching, how do I connect Facebook to my blog? So there's a bunch of them plugins about Facebook. And how do you know what the good ones are? Check the star ratings. Check the star ratings. Four stars, four and a half stars, zero stars, four stars, five stars. So you're you're checking stars. You're checking how many ratings. These both have 30. This has 10,000 installations. This only has 2,000. So this is how you can become a, a savvy shopper of plugins, even if they're free. Uh, you look at how many how many stars we have. Oh, this is an amazing plugin, right? It's got five stars. Zero installations, and it's only got one review from the author's mother, obviously. Mm -hmm. This one's got four and a half, 318 reviews, 200,000 installations. So if you're looking for a particular um, feature that it's not built into WordPress, there's probably a plugin for it. You can search here at the top, slideshow, and you're going to find, in my case, 503 possibilities. Video gallery, slider, WD, pixelating image, slideshow gallery, superb slideshow gallery. <coughs> Not so superb, it has zero stars. Uh, just on and on, lots of plugins. Snazzy slider. At least one person thinks it's snazzy. So you're going to you're going to browse. You're going to read this. You're going to look at the stars, how many installations. If it's really limited like this, you can you can take your chances. Only 30 installations. It may be good. Maybe it just hasn't gotten enough traction. People might not know about it. Under more details, you you if there are reviews, you will see a tab that says reviews right here reviews so this person says excellent support five stars this person says support one star so there's a whole world of plugins out there I've mentioned a couple that I recommend duplicator akismet jetpack let me mention a couple more. If you go, um, if you if you search on the on the box on the top right, search, um, search for uh, Yoast which is Y-O-A-S-T, S-E-O. <coughs> Yoast, it's like toast, but with a Y. Y-O-A-S-T. <coughs> Yoast, S-E-O. Search that, press Enter. Hopefully you get near the top somewhere, you get a result that got a little uh, stoplight here. Stop sign. Stoplight. Yoast, S-E-O by Team Yoast. This is a big name in this field. Basically, I'm looking for a good SEO plugin. I'm looking for an, a plugin that will help me improve my SEO. Um, just by itself, uh, these sorts of plugins will really help you properly optimize your sites. But there's a lot of them. In this case, 226 results. <coughs> But the one that you want is this one here by Team Yoast. It has four and a half stars, 1,400 reviews, over 1 million active installations, updated two months ago, and is compatible with my version of WordPress. So in my SEO class, we would go into more detail on how to use this plugin. <coughs> but you can always go to more details, read the frequently asked questions, 
visit their website, read the documentation, and learn on your own. But this is a plugin that will help you optimize every screen of your site. Because SEO is about crafting your message to be found. Um, and you should be optimizing every page of your site, not just the home page, the about page, the contact page, the products page, page one and page two of the products page, every page of your site, every blog post. That's a big effort. So plugins like this will help you do that. I use this one in my company all the time. Another one that's pretty famous also that does the same thing is all in one SEO pack. All in one SEO pack. This one's also got four and a half stars, but Yoast has 1,000 more reviews. It also has a, more than a million installations. It's also compatible. These are two big competitors. This one's from Michael Torbert. And you don't need both. They're both trying to do the same thing, so if you get them both, they're just going to conflict. You want either or. I personally have used the Yoast plugin a lot. I like it. I have colleagues that swear by this one. It also works. Whichever one works, whichever one is fine. But when I teach my class on SEO, usually I'm focusing on the Yoast SEO plugin. It's on the syllabus, but let me write here, recommended plugins, a kismet, to help stop spam on your blog, duplicator, to back up your site, Jetpack to give you extra features. To give you extra features on your site. Um, Yoast SEO to help you optimize SEO. Your site. And then just um, as a preview, when we when we do the e-commerce stuff, which will be our next class meeting, we also have a plugin. Uh, let me mark it over here. E-commerce plugins, because there's many of them, but there's two big ones. Um, the one we're going to use is called WP eCommerce, and another big famous one is called WooCommerce, and another one is called Shopify. All three of them accomplish the same thing, selling products online. We're going to talk about WP eCommerce, because I'm going to say easier for beginners, and WooCommerce more powerful but not as easy for beginners. And Shopify, I haven't used that one enough to give you a, an opinion of it, really. But all three of them are highly useful and viable plugins. And I believe WooCommerce was just bought by WordPress. Um, so I have no doubt that they're eventually going to implement built in to WordPress a lot of its features. But uh, WooCommerce is a big one in the world of, of, of WordPress e-commerce plugins. But we're going to use WP Commerce, and what we learn on that plugin will still be transferable to WooCommerce. It's just that as a beginner, as for beginners, and the amount of time we have, I think we'll, we'll be able to get up and running faster 
with what WP Commerce. And I'll show you examples of our real clients where we've done this with both of the plugins and they work they work great. I'm going to save these notes in the network folder in a little bit. That's what I wanted to talk about regarding plugins. Plugins are mini apps that add more features to your WordPress site. They may be completely free, but oftentimes they are freemium. Most features activated and plugin is free. Power features or uh, pro features are paid. Depending on the plugin, $5, $50, $500 really ranges. There's no, there's no um, set price for these. It can really range depending on its features. Oftentimes with WooCommerce, so WP Commerce out of the box, it can do what we want. A lot of times WooCommerce, for some of the more cool or advanced things, we need like sub-plugins or modules for this plugin, and those are usually not free. So you know, a little, a little, pay a little here, pay a little there to, to get more features of WooCommerce. And for us with WP Commerce, we'll be able to get up and running pretty quick, but WooCommerce is definitely the one that's more robust. So in this class, I'm usually as much as possible talking about the free aspect of things, and that will continue. Any questions so far on plugins? Okay, what I want to do then is... Um, I want to use the duplicator archive, I mean the duplicator to make an archive of our site. We're getting close to the end of the day. I want to make a duplicator backup of our site so I've got it safe for us when we come back on the next class meeting so that maybe you can work on this at home to get practice again to make the duplicator. Uh, and then I want to end up by talking a little bit about um, hosting providers because all of the work we've been doing so far has existed on our local host on your computer only no one else can visit your site you would need to buy an account on a provider we'll talk about that in a moment but I want to back up the site we've already done it two times at least together first day second day we'll do it one more time today You'll help me out here. I'm on the back end here. What's my first step to go make a, pa a backup of my site? Button duplicator. Yes. So we've got a we've got the duplicator button. That's not there by default. That's that was a plugin that we added. So I'm gonna click. Am I gonna click? What am I gonna do with duplicator? You can click or you can go to packages. If you click, it takes you to packages. It says you don't have any packages. You say, well, wait a minute, I made a copy last, last week. Remember at the beginning of the day, we resurrected the site and it said clean up existing files. That's what we did. We deleted the old copies of the site. So there's no packages. There's no backups. I still have a backup on my flash drive. I'm not going to delete that, but internally here it doesn't see any copies, and that's fine. Um, let's uh, at the top right now. Everything this is coming from instruction number four again. If you still have that handy, I'm doing instruction number four. 
the first part, archive your site. We already have the plugin installed, step one, uh, step two, step three, step four, step five. We're on step five. Click create new tab at the top. So on the top right, we have a button that says create new. We're going to make a new package, a new archive, a new backup. We'll do a quick check. My requirements pass. If it failed, I'll check it in a moment. Then some other options here. We never really need to edit any of these options of storage, archive, and installer. You could change the name if you want, but remember last week I said if you keep this name, that's useful because then it's in order alphabetically, or numerically actually. So it'll have you'll have these new copies every time you make a backup. There's the optional note. So notice on the right side, notes, I, I like to add a note because that then lets me add some detail here about what I have done or what I need to do, what's in the archive. So I will add a note here. Um, what did we do today? We Oh, we uh, edited widgets. added video, basic code editing, added, or um, I want to say here on the next line, to do, um, WordPress updates. Because I can also use this space. No, what The user never sees this. This is for yourself. When you work on the site, you, you see this stuff here. So when we come back, one of the things I want to do is I want to update WordPress. I want to have the discussion about WordPress updates and all of that. And that's enough for my notes here, unless you want to write more. But then on the bottom right, click Next. Click next, and then what else do my notes say? In the scan complete section, select build at the bottom. If your scan failed, read the notes and check tech support. So mine all look good, but one thing that could happen where you, there's three things. You could get a good you could get a warning, you could get an error. If these are all good, then I'm ready to build. If I get a warning, I can still build, I can still make the backup, because the warning lets me proceed. But the warning, if any of these are yellow with a warning, I would click to read it. And one of the common warnings is total size, main check, and large files. Meaning, um, my site currently so under my files here, my site is about 31.87 megabytes. I believe that when your site gets to about 125 or 150 megabytes, you get a warning. Because depending on your server, as it's making your backup and you have such a big site, your server might slow down, your server might crash, who knows. So there's just a warning. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you can't proceed, but you might get a warning if your site is really big. I would still proceed and try it. Uh, and I really shouldn't say your server's going to crash. I just mean it's going to slow down. The backup might fail. Your site should still be okay, but maybe you won't be able to do the backup very easily. Large files. That's pretty common, too. If you upload your photos directly from your digital camera, you're most likely guaranteed to get this warning. You never want to upload your, your pictures straight from your digital camera. Those are way too high quality for a website. They're probably, you know, 20 megapixel images where a one or where a half a megapixel will suffice on the web. 20 megapixels is great for print. It's way overkill to view on a website. 
So if I do get any warning about large files, you can click there. It'll tell you exactly which files are too big. It won't actually let you do anything here, but it's going to tell you this file is very big. So you have to decide to delete it or to ignore it. But those are the two common things that happen. Your site itself is too big, most likely because your individual files are too big. The moral is don't upload your huge, high quality size pictures. Yes? So, um, if it's already red instead of yellow, and that's only 41 pixels, mm -hmm. then it's red. There must be some other things. What else is red? Um, can you actually Maybe. Let's wait for the break in a moment and we'll double check. But if it's green, we're ready to go. If it's orange, we have a pause, but we can still go. If it's red, it's not going to let you proceed. So we're going to wait and we're going to see if we can figure that out. But um, everyone hopefully has a green, especially with our site. Click Build. It's going to process it depending on how many pictures you have, how many pages, how many users, how, how much data you have. This could take a while, or it could take 9.18 seconds. Um, I have had instances where this takes 10 minutes. Not that often. Usually this is going to take 1 minute, 2 minutes. Uh, I have had to wait 10 minutes or so. I'm like, did this really, did this crash? Is there a problem? I'm just going to keep waiting. And then 10 minutes later, it was done. Um, but this took nine seconds. The site was uh, 31 megabytes, compressed down to 13 and a half. So it's been compressed. And now, again, we have an installer file and an archive. You want to click on both to download it. I'm going to click Installer. I'm in Firefox, so it pops up like this. Safari will look different. Internet Explorer will look different. This is basic web stuff. You should know how to download a file. But it's telling you here, save the file? Yes, OK. And then on my archive, I'm also going to click the archive. Open it or save it? Save it. I'm going to click OK. In Firefox, at the top right, that little down arrow means I just downloaded a file. If I click here, it says you downloaded the installer, you downloaded the zip file. Again, this is Firefox. If you're in Chrome, it's a different button somewhere else. And I can click the folder to show me the files. Because what you need to do, which is what we did last week, you need to take with you or email it, you need to take with you both the installer file and the zip file. They work together. The zip file has a perfect copy of your whole site, every page, every text, every theme, every product, and the installer file is what we will use to resurrect our site. You don't want to unzip the zip file. You don't unzip it and then you drop it into the folder. That will not work. You leave that zip file zipped, and, and then this installer will resurrect it. You don't double-click the installer. You follow the steps in my instructions, which we did at the beginning of the day, which we will do together on the next class meeting. But these two files I need to put onto my fast drive and take, but I will put them into a folder. It doesn't do it automatically. Remember, at the beginning of the day, I gave you a folder called 2015-1106. I'm going to click I'm going to right click on an empty spot to create a new folder. I want a new folder with today's date, 2015 11 16. And in that new folder, I'm going to put the installer and the zip file, both of them into that folder. I'm going to put it on my fast drive. I've got my copy. Again, this is basic computer stuff. You want to take both of these files and put them into a folder. You can right click on the empty spot to create a new folder. Call it whatever you want, but I'm calling it today's date. 
And then I'm going to put it on my flash drive. I've got a flash drive with a folder for this class, and I'm going to move it from this localhost computer to my flash drive. And I've got last week's um, work, last week's backup, and this week's backup. It doesn't automatically back itself up. We're doing it manually. That's still a copy from last week if I wanted to go back to that point. If I really messed up today and wanted to start over with last week, I still have a copy. And now I have a copy of what I did today. Next time we come back, we're going to resurrect the site again together, and then we'll get up and running and start talking right away about updates and, and e-commerce and all of that. We'll do lab time soon. But that's your concept. You need to get a copy of those files onto your flash drive or email them to yourself. Those two files come from the duplicator plugin. And um, that makes us a, a copy of our site. So if you got lost a little bit there, we'll do lab time in a moment because I, I want to mention briefly and then we'll mention it more in detail on the next class. But I want to mention um, some providers uh, because our site right now only exists on your computer. It's not a real site yet. A real site would be victorsbakery.com, not localhost slash Victor's Bakery. That, only me that means it only exists on your computer. For you to get your own domain name, your own little, your own little piece of the, of the web, you need to invest in a service provider. They have different names. Service provider, internet provider, domain provider, etc. Um, and there's a bunch of them out there. There's big national and international ones. There's also local ones. Honestly, I have to say, don't bother with the local ones. I do support small businesses and such, local businesses, but I don't think it's very useful when it comes to internet providers to go with the local guys because uh, they're usually more expensive. They don't have the same sorts of features. Maybe they have great tech support, but... Uh, they might be slower than the big boys. They often need to get um, access anyway from the big boys, so that's why the prices are a little higher. So you might as well go to the big ones. I'll mention a few here that my company has dealt with. There's so many out there, but I'll mention three or four that we've had direct dealings with. One of them is probably the, still the biggest one globally at the moment is GoDaddy. GoDaddy.com. So big that they've had Super Bowl commercials. Mm. Now that's a big deal. So GoDaddy.com. So I'm going to mention, I'm going to write some notes here, and I'll put the notes in the in the network folder in a little bit. But um, notes on service providers. So some big names, godaddy.com, bluehost.com, hostmonster.com, and hostgator.com. My company has worked with these, and you might say, what about oneandone.com, and what about cloudnet.org, and what about blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I haven't worked with them. You can always do a search. HostGator.com, testimonials. Cloudflare.org, testimonials. Look it up. But these are the ones that we've dealt with. These are some big names. They all provide you the same thing. Because what you're going to need, 
what you need from them are domain name and hosting. Domain name, that's your URL, your web address. So victor.com, .net, .org, .biz, .us, .co. There's so many of these dot somethings nowadays. It's not just dot coms anymore, because all the dot coms are taken. The web has been around for 25 years. The internet's older, but the web has been around for 25 years. So Victor's Bakery was taken 10 years ago. Maybe Victor's dot, victorsbakery.co hasn't. Maybe. So you're not limited to just dot coms. You've got dot co's, dot nets, dot us. Uh, dot .io, dot .cx, etc. There's so many of them out there. Believe it or not, there's there's dot .arrow, there's dot .guru, uh, there's dot .xyz, there's dot .ninja. Lots of them, lots of them out there. The dot .com though is still the one that everyone thinks is the only one, and things will change. Um, but the name is one of the things you need to purchase. And just taking a quick look here, GoDaddy seems to be selling .coms for $2.99, .club for $9.99, .net for $11.99. I'm going to take a quick look at Bluehost. What are their prices at the moment? $3.95. Well, that's hosting. Um, Products, hosting, um, migration, quick start. Yep, you can just browse around. Let's see, host um, monster.com, $4.95 a month, plus $100 in free. Google AdWords and Bing credits. That's for SEO. So prices are going to range. Honestly, the, the price of a domain is going to range from zero dollars to two thousand dollars. But you're never going to really deal with those. You're going to deal with like the twelve ninety nine ones. The two thousand dollar ones are going to be these premium domain names. If I really, really wanted victorsbakery.com, maybe it is for sale for $2,000. So those premium domain names can be very expensive. But the good thing is you really only have to pay for them once. Someone is just basically holding on to it to make a big sale. And then when they sell it to you for $500, then it's going to cost the normal price of like $12. But with so many possibilities of domain names, you can probably find victorsbakesd.com. It's not as important like it used to be to have your name literally as the domain name. Uh, you can get by with these short names and initials and all of that stuff. The other piece of the pie, of the puzzle, is uh, hosting, which is the hard drive. Where do you upload your pictures? Where do you FTP your files into? Where do you uh, save everything to? The hard drive. Hosting. And again, all of these big names, even the small names, are in competition with each other all the time to one-up each other. I remember that they would give you um, a that you could pay for a whopping 100 megabytes of space 10 years ago, 15 years ago. And now you're gonna get a gigabyte. That's a thousand megabytes right there. Even the most basic plan. So again, these are gonna, these are gonna vary in price all the time. Uh, like 495, well, uh, this, these are per year. The domain name usually you buy them per year, and the hosting you're usually paying some amount four ninety five, fifteen ninety five per month. So 
So just some quick numbers here. If I look at GoDaddy, let's see uh, what's the hosting costing at the moment. Let's see, web hosting, economy $4.99 a month, deluxe $6.99, ultimate $9.99. What's the difference? Read the details. They're all going to tell you what they're selling. They're all in competition. One website, unlimited websites, a thousand email addresses, premium DNS, site backup. Ooh, that comes with backup. So, just range of prices there. Bluehost, they're talking about over here, $5.95 a month for this plan. I'm sure I can look at other plans. Shared hosting. Three ninety-five a month. Okay, the starter one. Maybe that's all I need as a starter. I only need a hundred gigabytes of space. Gigabytes, not megabytes. Uh, Host Monster four ninety-five. What are the features? Unlimited storage. Ooh, they're giving unlimited storage for their basic price. Unlimited gigabytes, etc. So. All of these are in competition. They all want your business. They all have a phone number. I would recommend give them a call. You're usually going to get a better deal talking to someone. Rather than clicking buttons here, talk to someone. Cry a little. Switch from one to one if you don't like GoDaddy. Yeah, you can switch. Just like you can switch your phone number away from one terrible phone company to another terrible phone company, you can, uh, you can do that. So definitely. And uh, depending on the company you're going away from, it may be easy or not so easy. I've done this from Yahoo over to GoDaddy. I've done it from GoDaddy over to Bluehost for clients. They, they range. The, the Yahoo one was a little difficult, but that was probably like six years ago. The GoDaddy to Bluehost was pretty easy. I haven't done it very recently um, in the past year. But um, that, their tech support is there and they'll help you out. So yeah, you can go from one to the other if, the, if you see a better, de detail, a better deal elsewhere. What's the um, proximity of the cost that you have the website made? Like, That's such a huge answer. Huh? That's such a huge answer because uh, depending on the person or company making it, it can range from like a, a you know, a just graduated designer charging you twenty dollars an hour to an established one charging you a hundred dollars an hour or a, or a lump sum fee of two hundred dollars to two thousand dollars five thousand dollars it's such a huge range depending on what kind of website you like or that you want and you're gonna see here that they're gonna sell you all in one website two hundred dollars it may be very limited or it may be perfect for you there's just such a range I can't really say you need to educate yourself during the break, we can talk uh, about how much some websites that I built, my company has built, but they really range, and they're not two hundred dollars. So um, you're going to be investing in, you're going to be paying a provider to host it, but you're also going to be paying a designer or developer to create it, or you can save money doing it yourself. Take this class, other classes, keep educating yourself. But what you're spending is your time, and maybe you want to be selling your products rather than building your site. Question. And GoDaddy, they, they say they already have a um, web press area, and I never knew what that meant. Does that mean that, I mean, that you just FTP it directly to GoDaddy? It says that you can go in there. I, I've got an account, and it also says that that, well, it's roughly as it's a WordPress hosting. Yeah. Um, or do you know that? Web hosting and WordPress hosting. Usually, the word the ones that are marketed as WordPress hosting are a bit of training wheels, in that it will help you do a lot, but then it might limit you to some of the power features, like the e-commerce. So you have to click to read each one to tell you what it's about. But usually, I recommend to people, don't get the one that says WordPress hosting because usually it's training wheels that limit you. And people come to my classes and say, why does my WordPress look different than yours? They bought the web hosting, the WordPress hosting one, which limits you, because they don't want to overwhelm you with all the features. I think that's the one I have is really robust. With GoDaddy? Yeah, WordPress manage, um, management. Management or something like that. I go in because if they're going to manage a WordPress site for GoDaddy, it's you know, it's a 
four or five dollars a month or something like that, and it's the full function what we've been doing is a little bit more fancy. But it's just a blank WordPress. You don't. It doesn't give you any. Here's how you do that. Here's how you do this. Do you have? Do you have direct? Yeah. So you actually add it, it, it when you put in your pictures and stuff. It actually uploads it to the live on the side. Yeah, I've been kind of playing with my live sites, not putting pictures, but and then I'm doing the, the fake site here. So there's oh. all that. So what I'm learning is through Victor, I've been able to. Okay. So if you're interested in, I think it's the WordPress hosting, but because it gives you a full WordPress hosting. The um, the thing about that, does it give you direct access to the server? Yeah, I've been growing up and changing my site live. No, I mean the server. Are you able to connect to it with like an FTP client or edit things in the file manager? It says you have FTP access. On the WordPress hosting? Yeah, it's just WordPress. It's four different options. Yeah, it should be better because I think I saw it there too. Mine four. They might have um, they might have updated it then at this point then I'm gonna say I don't know if you look into it and call them and it really sounds good great if it doesn't give you what you need don't come crying to me <laughs> <laughs> because I've always recommended to people and they might have fixed it because of the limitation uh, I'm still gonna continue to recommend the web hosting it is the more it might be the more powerful one Maybe the WordPress one is better now. I don't know. I can't speak to it. All I can say is that in my company, we never do this one. Maybe we'll look into it and it might be good. I don't know, but I'm going to be recommending that one. We're getting close to the end of the day, but the main thing that I wanted to say were here's some big companies that I would recommend. You might say, well, what about this one? What about that one? I use this one. I don't know. Are you happy with it? Does it provide you with the services? Is it at a good price? What's the tech support like? If none of those meet your needs, there's plenty of other ones that will. Um, so this is the part then. We've been working with WAMP server. It's been a fake site that's been living only in our virtual server on our computer. Eventually, we want to put our site live for real. These are four possible places where you can go for that. And it may or may not be easy to upload your sites there, but tech support. They're there. They all claim to be 24 hours a day, and I've dealt with all of these people on the phone and such, and I can call GoDaddy, and they're in Arizona, and they answer me, and I call them at midnight, and they answer, and I can call the other ones, and there's always a person to talk to. So that would be the next step. I want to end it at this point. You might have questions, but I want to end it at this point. Uh, and and uh, as we do the e-commerce aspect of things, you might end up with a great site in this class that then you want to put live for real. So you're going to go back and look at these notes and decide how much am I going to spend um, to get my own piece of the internet. I'm going to put these notes in the in the WordPress in the e-commerce folder. E right. I'm going to put them in there and you've got uh, today's notes you can have those. And I want to remind you, we will not have class next week. This is technically the last day of part one. The next time we'll see each other is in, is, let me confirm here, the next time we're going to see each other for part two of the class is Monday the 30th. Two weeks. Next week is Thanksgiving week. Basically the whole week we're shut down. Um, and then when we come back in two weeks, the 30th, we will have part two of this class. And it's going to be a brand new class with a brand new ad code. Everyone needs to register again. We have a pretty good full class here, but I don't know if we'll have many more people. I know that some people came to part one and said, this is too slow for me, I'll be back for part two. I don't know if I'm going to have a big mad rush of people coming. I would recommend get here a bit early uh, because your seat may be taken. Just because you were able to enroll in part one and were able to get a seat with a computer does not guarantee you 
a space or a computer for part two. I would recommend to get here about 30 minutes early. I may be wrong. I may have less people for part two. I don't know. But usually my classes have lots of people, especially the first few days. And I do have to turn people away if I don't have space. So I would recommend getting here about 30 minutes early, November the 30th on Monday. We'll start a brand new class, new syllabus, new handouts, and we're going to start to focus on the more intermediate to advanced stuff. Part one was basic to intermediate. Then we're going to talk intermediate to advanced, specifically e-commerce, in two weeks, part two. So thanks for coming for part one. See you in two weeks for part two.